Hey, welcome to this new TechCast series. In this series, we're gonna take a static HTML design and convert it to a Laravel application. We'll be seeing more details about that application in just a moment, but first, let's talk about TechCast and Laravel. TechCast is a platform that I developed where I can share content with other people. And here you're gonna find videos ranging from various topics like PHP and JavaScript or Node. And the videos are gonna reach all different levels of developers, from beginner developers to more advanced developers. So you can visit TechCast, you can scroll through our current library right now we are having a 50% off sale on all the plans so the monthly plan the yearly plan you can register for that there is a bit of a bio here on myself I've spent many years in the healthcare technology sector developing mission critical software and over those years I learned how to architect and write software that not only meets the required features but also has those other qualities that we would like for example maintainability reliability scalability and so I try to share some of that experience with you in these videos and if you're uncertain at all you can always test drive TechCast by viewing our free videos all right so let's go back to our slide deck and I want to talk a little bit about Laravel we're gonna to go to Laravel's homepage and let it speak for itself and as you can see Laravel provides a complete ecosystem for web development. It's built using PHP and it really is a batteries included framework. We're going to get a chance to see a lot of those features as we build out our application. And over the years, the Laravel team has spent a lot of time developing their ecosystem. And that ecosystem includes not only the framework itself, but also tools and services to allow you to easily deploy your Laravel application into production environments. And you can see some of those products up here at the top. In fact, I use a product called Forge. I also use a product called Envoyer. And along with their products, they have their framework here. You can see their core framework. They have a number of starter kits. So if you want to use React on your front end or Vue on your front end, you can do that. Or you can use Livewire with blade templates. It's really your choice. There's a lot of flexibility within the framework. And in addition, there's a lot of packages that you can add to the framework to extend its functionality. So for example, if you want to add payment collection, you can use the cashier package. One of the things that I've always felt Laravel has stood out with is in their documentation. Their docs are just stellar. We're going to see some of those docs in just a moment. But if you've never built anything with Laravel before, we'll go through that process together. All right, so let's go back into our slides. Up next, I just want to take a moment and review the survey application itself. We're going to be writing an application that allows a user to take a survey, but in the back end, an admin is going to be able to manage and create surveys. All right, so let's take a look at that. We're going to move over to our development environment here. I'm using PHP Storm, and you can use whatever development environment that you want. So maybe you using Visual Studio Code. And at the top level, you can see that I have a directory that's sitting on my desktop. And then inside that directory, I have two directories. One has the design, and we're gonna look at that. And this other directory is gonna have all of the content for the video, so the slides that we're using. I just keep everything organized in one directory as I'm shooting videos to make it a little easier for myself. But before we take a look at this design, let's go ahead and run it. I'm gonna open up another window for my terminal, and I'm gonna go ahead and just label this. I like to make them clear. So this is the design. I'm gonna switch into the design directory. And I'm using Vite so we can quickly serve this up. So we're gonna do run npm run dev, and I'll get a Vite server, and I'll be able to visit this. So I'm gonna click this, and we'll open up a new tab over here. So the design has two layouts. There's this index page, which has a quick survey. So I can see a title and a description at the top. And then there's these sections where each section has a number of questions. And then in this design, I can scroll down and I can see all the different sections. And when I'm done, I can submit my answers. Now I think that this design's okay. I feel like these things get a little long sometimes. And I prefer this wizard layout where now we have kind of a wizard type of feel where every page is gonna be one of those sections. So here's the first section and you can come in and complete this first section and then you can click the next button. And now we're doing the second section. So now I can complete this section and I can enter all the data like this and then I can click the next button. The next button is disabled whenever there is a required element. So you can see the required elements are indicated by the red asterisk. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four stars here. And after I select a date, now the next button is enabled. I can put short comments. And as we're going along, you can see that there's a number of different question types. So, so far we've seen, if we go back here, you've seen a star, here's a date selector, here's a short comment. There is a multiple choice here, so I can select multiple. I'm asking for an email, a URL. There's a radio button where I get to select one, and there's a drop down where I select one. So all of those are different question types. At the very end, we see another question type here, a slider where I can slide the value out. I can enter a longer response. 
And then on our final page, we see another type of question which has conditional feedback. So here's a parent question. It says, would you like to provide additional details? If I click no, nothing really happens. If I answer yes, then there is this child question that is shown. And here I can enter my optional feedback. And as you can see at the very top, I get this indicator at the top showing where we are in the wizard. So we have one more page that's left. If I click next, we'll see that last page, which is really a summary of all my answers. All the different sections, I have all the answers that I've put in here. I can do a final review and then I can click submit. So obviously this is a mock-up. This is designed for the application we want to build. This is not functional right now. If I click submit, it's not going to go anywhere. But now I want to take the static design and I want to turn this into a Laravel application. So this is what we're going to be building in this video series. If I go back to the code, let's just do a quick code review. We take a look at the package.json first. You can see that we are using Tailwinds for style-in. So we're going to be pulling Tailwinds in. Uh, here's that Vite server that we are running. So the Vite config is pretty standard. I don't think there's anything special here, but you can see that code. And also the Tailwind config is pretty standard. In the public directory is where all the code for this mockup exists. And you can see that I have the index.html and the wizard, the two different views. We're just going to look at the wizard in this one. And at the very top, there's a big chunk of JavaScript. There is a toggle between dark theme and light theme. Let's go ahead and take a look at that in the application. Let's go back over here. At the very top, here's the toggle button. I can click this and it'll go to a light theme, or if you prefer, there's the dark theme. So there is a bit of code that we're importing from this theme.js file to make that work. And this is a JavaScript module and we're exporting this toggle theme function, which we are wiring up to our button right there, that toggle theme function. So after that theme toggle, there is a bit of JavaScript here to make the page function. And we're not going to go through the details of this yet. As we build out our application, we'll take these piece by piece and look at them later on. But there are functions to render the different steps in the wizard. Here's a function to check the required fields to see if we have anything required left so that we can enable or disable that next button. Here's a bit of JavaScript to populate the summary page. So we're dynamically looking at all the questions and their answers so we can build up that summary page. A bit of code to update the wizard at the very top, that little progress bar. And at the very bottom, you can see that there's some code here where we're adding event listeners to our DOM elements so that they become reactive. So when we click a button, it does a certain thing. And as part of these event listeners, we're going to see code that makes the star rating work and also the slider type of question where we're sliding that, that thing around, make that work. And then finally, there's some JavaScript that enables the conditional logic. So when I had that parent child question relationship, this is the bit of JavaScript that's going to make that function. So if I scroll back to the top of this script tag. I'm just going to minimize this so that it's less visual clutter. So inside of our body, we can see our theme toggle button. I'm going to minimize that. And as we're going through, you're going to see Tailwinds classes on all the different elements. At the very top of the survey, it had a bit of a header. So this is the header element. We had a dynamic step indicator. So that was the different steps in the wizard. And then here's our form. Form. And then our form is going to contain all these sections. And so a section is one page of the wizard. Every section is going to have a header and then it can have any number of questions. And so here is a select one radio question. Here is the select one drop down question. So these are the two questions that are in this first section. And then we can look at section two. It's the same concept, a header and then any number of different types of questions. And every one of these question types has its own HTML. When we convert this to Laravel, we're going to be moving those over to components so we can reuse that content. Section three with its questions. And here's section four. I'll just collapse this up. And section five with the conditional logic. Same thing. We got a header. Here's our parent question and here's the child question. To make the parent and child connected, we are using some data attributes here so that we can see those. That's going to make that function. We'll talk about that code later on. Here's the summary section. It's going to have a header and then it has this dynamically generated content after that. And then the two navigation buttons here where we can click back or next. And then finally the submit button for the wizard. And if we take a look at the styles.css, uh, there's not too much different here. It's pretty standard tailwinds. We are enabling the dark theme up at the very top, but this is definitely enough to get us started here. All right, so we've looked at the static design. These are all static HTML pages and CSS, and our job now is to port that over and make a Laravel application from this. All right, so let's go back over to our slides and take a look at what's next. 
at a high level, the data model that we have looks like this. So we have a survey and a survey is going to have many different sections and each section is a different page on that wizard. But a section can have one to many different questions. We saw the variety of question types. So sometimes it's a select one radio button. Sometimes it's a drop down. There's sliders. There's a star rating system. And each of those types will eventually end up into a Laravel component. And then finally, we saw a question can have a conditional parent. So depending on what the answer is you put in there for the parent, we will optionally show or hide the child question. So we have a good understanding of what this data model looks like. What are we trying to build? And at a high level, these are the requirements that I put down initially. These may change as we move along, but as an admin, I wanna be able to create and manage either directly the surveys and or survey blueprints. I'm not sure if I'm gonna introduce blueprints or not, but a blueprint would be the concept of I can create kind of a template for a survey and then I can reuse that template over and over and over again. Otherwise, another way I can do it is I can create a survey and then I can clone that survey to create another survey that is like it. I haven't decided which way I want to go yet, but either I want to manage surveys directly or I'm going to manage their blueprints. If we do have blueprints, then as an admin, I want to publish a blueprint to create a new survey instance. And then if you think about the data flow, once this is published as a user, I want to be able to visit the website and I want to complete a survey instance by answering all the different questions. And then there's one more feature that allows admins to access a dashboard that sees all the survey results. So as we're moving along, I am going to put all of this source code into GitHub. So we're going to go ahead and tag what we have right now is video number one. I'm just going to copy this and let's make sure I have everything checked in. I do. So we'll make this tag and then we will push these tags up to our GitHub repo. So now that they're pushed up here, let's go ahead and visit the GitHub repo. And you can see the GitHub repos right here. You can see the content that we've been viewing in the development environment. But now we should also have up here under tags, I should be able to select the tag for every single video. So this is video number one. If you want to see the state of the development of video number one, you could go to this tag and you can see what it was at the end of that video. All right, let's close this down here and go back to our slides. And that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to try to keep all the videos at a reasonable length here. In our next video, we're going to install Laravel and we're going to get the static page working in our Laravel application. So we'll see you then.